Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Today we bring you a bonus pandemic battle report from a simpler time and a game of sharp practice. So anyone who's played sharp practice knows that as the attacker completing objectives such as getting off a board edge, escorting a wagon off the board, Burning down a building is incredibly difficult, especially when both sides have equal sized forces. I do know that the attacker is usually allowed more support points in sharp practice, but support points in sharp practice are not nearly as uh, decisive as they are in, say, chain of command. Now in chain of command you can have equal sized forces and double the support points and suddenly you have armor, uh, you have artillery, there's a lot more powerful units that you can purchase in chain of command as opposed to sharp practice. Now there are useful support units in sharp practice. I'm not going to say there aren't. The exploring officer is great. Extra deployment points is great. Uh, things like that are, are very good. Holy men. But they aren't a tiger tank. So just doubling the support points isn't necessarily going to give the attackers uh, the leg up that they need in our experience. So tonight's game is going to be um, another test. We have run a test like this at the Paint All the Minis channel a few weeks back where the defenders were defending with less troops than the attackers. And it turned out it still was too many for the attackers to overcome, so they still couldn't achieve the objective. So tonight, we're going to give the defenders even less and see if they can hold the church um, from the larger attacking force. So we'll go ahead and get on with the briefing. This mission is called Burn It Down. The British have learned that an important meeting between a high-ranking rebel politician and a spy who happens to be the minister of a church is happening outside of Philadelphia. The British army has cordoned off the area so no escape is possible. A strike force is sent in to arrest the traitors and destroy the church. The rebels have scraped together what they could from the local village and set out to stop the British. The British have a jump on them and the rebels, I'm sorry, the British have a jump on the rebels and will arrive first. Mission, Captain Elson and his British strike force must destroy the church and arrest the traitors. The rebels must stop him. Deployment. The British will deploy their entire force from the Eastern Road, so the, the British will be starting over here. And similar to, I forgot what mission is, escort duty, one of the ones in the rule book, we're going to start the entire force on the board. They're going to get three moves. The deployment point is going to be considered here, but they can stack up units along the road in column, and skirmishers will deploy as normal. Uh, the extra moves are just to help them get up and start getting organized before they start getting peppered by rifle fire uh, from the Continentals. Uh, the Rebels, on the other hand, will be deploying over here. Um, and just as normal, so they're, they're not going to be considered defending, so they're not going to get the extra six inches uh, from their deployment point, which should help slow them down and hopefully make it so that the British can actually get into somewhat of a coherent formation before making their move on the church. So a real simple mission. Uh, I didn't put a lot of thought into it. It's just a test, like I said, pretty much a test game to see exactly how much more the attacker needs to actually accomplish a mission um, than the defenders have. So now we'll take a look at the forces. Here we have the attacking British force. I don't know points wise. I didn't calculate up points for these. I just kind of eyeballed it. So we're just gonna go with what we have. Um, so an overall command. We have Captain Harry Yelsden. He's a level three leader in charge of three groups of redcoats. Now this model here, this is the General Braddock model. My buddy Jens from Tabletop General sent me. I believe he's a French and Indian War model, but painted up as uh, the rest of the guys. He, he fits right in, I think. So he's in charge of them. He's assisted by Sergeant Luke Lankowski, level one leader. Both of them combined are gonna be controlling the three groups of redcoats who have sharp practice. We also have Jens himself commanding his group, his two groups of Hessian Grenadiers. They do not have sharp practice. They only have uh, aggressive. Um, and he is assisted by his Sergeant Hans Fritz. So these two leaders, he's level two, he's level one, in charge of the two groups of Hessians. We also have, of course, Lieutenant Dan, uh, Dan Klein, in charge of his light infantry and son of Magua in charge of Indian skirmishers. So that is the force that will be moving in to destroy the church. Here we have the much smaller American force. 
So these are going to be mainly militia as they have been rounded up from the local village and quickly formed up and sent in to try to defend the church and the meeting happening in the church. So in command, we have Captain Solomon Montrose. He's be, going to be the overall commander, a level two commander in charge of two groups of uh, militia in line. He's assisted by Sergeant Andrew Cox, the militia sergeant, level one. Uh, let's see here, we also have Captain Robert Wadsworth, of course. He's going to be a level two leader and they have rifles. They're the Rangers, so they're really good. So that's really the biggest heavy hitter unit in this list. Uh, we also have Kevin Green, a militia skirmisher sergeant. He's here. And then we have Bill Thompson, a light infantry sergeant who happens to be commanding a militia unit mixed with light infantry. They will be running as regular militia. So these two are militia uh, skirmishers. They have to be in cover at long range to get the plus one. And they don't have bayonets. They're just farmers with muskets uh, hiding in the bushes. And then finally, we have Sergeant Greg Padilla and one group of blue coats here who have just happened to be in the, in the village when this all went down. So he's gathered them and he's going to assist Montrose in trying to defend the church. And that is it. That is both forces and the briefing, and we'll go ahead and get started. Andre's arrived. He's been briefed. I've taken my free moves. Andre suggested D2 plus one, so you can have a minimum of two, max of three. But anyway, I still got damn good roll. The main group under Ellison got all the way down here in open column. Son of Mago was able to run all the way up. Lieutenant Dan got all the way up there, and Kopke is uh, moving up towards the fence, and now we begin the game. Blue three, that is you, Andre. That's Robert, uh, Captain Robert Wadsworth. Wadsworth's come in here. Uh, I forgot to go for support. So Andre got the drummer, the physic, and the holy man. He had three points, and I brought the musician and a uh, holy man. And what else did I bring? Oh, I, was, I upgraded uh, Lieutenant Dan to level two leader. And force morale wise, I'm at a 10, I'm at 11, I mean, and Andre's at a 9. Blue right. 6. That's Padilla, that's your continental line. Padilla has come in here, right on the road pretty much. Red 4. Red 4. That's my uh, Sergeant Hans Fritz. Sergeant, I like the sign, the sound of that. He's my uh, leader. That means you're not doing secondary, anything, right? Leader, right. <laughs> that is true. Flags are really worthless unless we get four of them on the first turn. One. That's uh, Montrose. They come. The militia has arrived from the village, obviously. Except the militia uh, farmers. Yeah, they haven't turned around and run back yet. You got a roll for them. Uh, Red six, son of Magua. It's moved up to here. In towards the orchard, red flag, which actually means something to you. Does it? Oh yeah, because I can activate blue two. That's Langkowski. I'm sorry. That's Andrew Cox. That's your uh, sergeant for your militia line troops. Let's get some more red ones out. Come on, Andre. No man, another blue one. Who is that? Uh, Kevin Green. Kevin Green and his uh, militia troops have come in there. Oh, and another flag. Come on, Andre. Where's all the red ones at? Jeez. Um, <laughs> put them uh, in my other hand. Oh, apparently. <laughs> uh, that's your last unit. So Sergeant Thompson has come in here with his second group of militia skirmishers. So that's the entire rebel force on the board. You know where we are. Turn one. Oh, oh red. it's red. Oh, red one. Perfect, Andre. Thank you. That's Elsden. Just what you needed. All right, next card. Red flag. Here comes all the red ones. And you get to activate everything now. True. And another red flag. Hmm. And oh. what is it? A red five. Red five. Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan is advanced up towards the fence. Hey! Oh, blue flag. That's four. That's four. Mr. Rose and his ass has moved up. Got a great roll. What, 14 inches? Yeah. So open column. It was a thing of beauty. Okay, uh, I guess it really, so long as you don't get a flag, it two? doesn't matter. There's only two left? 
There's no, one, I have two, more. three, maybe Give me a four. flag. Give me a flag. It's, it's red. red. It is. Hmm, okay. Beautiful. Just what I needed. Well, I kind of need to get those guys over there, though, moving. That's the thing. I can't... Uh... I'm like, you can bring that line up and obliterate me. I could. <laughs> All right, I'm going to activate Bulls and we're going to give them a broadside. We are within 24, because so I did move up six when I activated them. So I'm getting 27 shots. First fire, present, long range. Needing fours. So remember this number, Andre. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So five more. Mm -hmm. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hits. So seven. Bang. Yeah, and those are all gonna go. Oh man, I was hitting on plus one because you're in column. Oh, well, I think seventeen is probably enough. <laughs> Somebody hitting on threes. <laughs> we are an open column. I don't know at that. I don't know if that counts. So I'm pretty sure it does. Have you put nine on the group with uh, the leader? <laughs> Holy crap. I might have to refight this one. Okay, so three dead. Three dead and four shock. Check your leader. No, it's not him. It's only take the eight. Group. They only get eight, yeah. Nothing to it. See, Man. only two dead. Two dead. And six shock. Yep. <laughs> okay. This or, is, uh, actually, that's not a flank shot. No, but you're in the open. Yeah, but it's not double shot. Oh. No, threes are a shock. Three, oh. In the open. Shoot. <laughs> okay, so two dead and six shock. <laughs> <laughs> it's so effective that it felt like double shock. <laughs> so we got uh, ten shock. Uh, five dead. Did you ever roll for your leader for those guys? No. Check it. Uh, he's not worried. Nope. All right, so you got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen dudes. I got 16, lots of dudes left. With ten shock. Next card. <laughs> Tiffin. Oh no! <laughs> Never got to activate Kopke. Damn it. So Montrose is beat to hell right now. He's wandered a little too close. And a red one. Probably should have went around the uh, fence here. <laughs> what is that a red three red three um uh, that's cop key i actually thought being on the road would get me out of dodge faster but uh mm. not so much cop key has made it over the fence and we're gonna next time we're gonna turn and start heading down the road blue flag Red one. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I was uh, unloaded. Yeah. Presented, fired, unload. I'm going to reload and present. That's going to be my action. And then I'm also going to... Uh, yeah. You Thank probably you. want to rethink that. Why? Uh, grab a tape measure and you'll figure it out. Elsden had uh, Lankowski break off. He sent his group under his command into the woods. So they're going to stay, stay unloaded. Meanwhile, he had the last two groups he's still in command of. Reload, move up a d6. He also ordered Son of Magua up into the orchard. Three, that's Wadsworth. Andre just had Wadsworth just move up 2d6 towards the uh, farmhouse there. Contemplated taking a shot at Lieutenant Dan, but changed his mind when he found out they would probably be in hardcover. Red flag. Due to the two fences and stuff. Blue four, Kevin Green. That is this group right here. Kevin Green had his militia men just move up to the edge of the orchard. So we can't see each other right now because technically he's outside of it. I'm inside. But Another we red flag. think there might be some enemy. They hear something there. there. You can't hear Indians in an orchard. You can hear these guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guys over there whistling and playing their bugles? Yeah, yeah maybe we could. Uh, that's Padilla, so you're Continentals. <laughs> Padilla's a uh, three-inch move there. Tra Padilla. Travis was just explaining to me that that wasn't a very good move. <laughs> I, I was thanking him for Captain the insight. <laughs> Three flags. 
Oh man. Hmm. You thinking about it? Activating an officer? No. <laughs> I need a force to do anything over here. Two, uh, that's the, um, that's Lankowski. He's already activated. Actually, he hasn't, his men have, but. But you're not going to pull shock? Yeah, no shock to pull. Red, no, blue five? Five, that would be Bill, William. Bill Thompson. Thompson brought his men behind Kevin Green's. I got a blob of militia form up here on my left flank. And a flag. Okay. Two more flags. One more. No. Tiffin. No, horrible. But I can activate uh, Copke's boys and Lieutenant Dan, and you've activated everything. No. You, you haven't? My uh, oh, your ass. Uh... Your ass man. <laughs> <laughs> the ass man. Leader number one. <laughs> so Lieutenant Dan moved up to the fence. Copke got his boys moving their facing this way in column, sneaking down the road. Meanwhile, ass man over here just backed his boys up and turned around. And we move on to the next turn. All right, here we go, Andre. And red flag. That's Wadsworth. Wadsworth is backed up over there. He's gonna fire at Elston's formation, even fours. Actually, With I rifles, said that. Long range. That was before I saw this. Uh. Yeah, one guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one shot hitting on threes or eight shots hitting on fours. What's the better odds? <laughs> uh, one shot. You gotta love it. If you can pop cocky, it might be worth it. Four hits. Four hits. So two on Elsden's boys. Shock and the others, two shock. So three total shock. We're already missing Lankowski. <laughs> what and are you gonna do? You can't pull shock without Lankowski. I'm half unloaded. Uh, you moved, free move, half unloaded. Yeah. Half loaded is where I. That's the. I'm half unloaded. Okay, you're I a don't half get unloaded loaded anymore, Travis. You're a half unloaded. I'm <laughs> half loaded. <laughs> okay, oh. that's Montrose, the ass man. He might pull another shock. So Andrew Cox, the sergeant, is still in here. Three more turns and they could be uh, get her battle ready. <laughs> <laughs> and well, at least Padilla. we're getting all my stuff. That's Padilla in the continent. <laughs> Padilla's whipping him into shape. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get uh, all those dudes in the line over there. Form the line, you maggots. Oh, red another flag. red flag. Sweet. Another red one. Ah, Elsden. Hmm. Elsden uh, took two shock, or a shock, off of one group. Then he wheeled them around. They took both actions to get to facing that direction. Then he had uh, some of Wagwa advanced. 1d6, got within range of Kevin Green. We're going to fire a volley. So seven shots. It'll be fours. It'll be first fire. Uh, no. Close range is fours. First fire make it a three. I don't get the plus one because they're not light infantry. They're... So they have to be in long range to get that bonus for shooting, but I get, uh, let's say threes. Six. Soft cover. Six, six soft. Uh, dead and three shot. Let's see if green was hit, because you did get hit by skirmishers. N not green. So let's say three shock. Yep. It's going to be brutal for, uh, Militia skirmishers to deal with three shock. And they're going to be reloaded. Move, fire, reload. Their move was their free action. Next card. Blue flag. Blue flag. Blue flag. One more blue flag. Make it. Uh, oh. Ah. You get to take your shock. Lankos. Oh. No, that's Lankos. He's going <laughs> to. Let's see, what, I'm definitely going to have him reload here. All right, so um, all Lankowski could do, he had him reload. Takes two, D's, two actions to get over a fence. So he's just stuck in there for now. Next card. Red six, son of Magua. He's already activated. Or his unit has. He's got nothing else to do. That's Hans Fritz over here. He can't do anything. <laughs> Except... Do inspirational stuff. Oh, I get to take another Ooh, shock off. Cox. 
Yeah, your militia sergeant. So does it matter or both have four? It doesn't matter. Okay. And there's your three. Oh, Kopke, perfect. Kopke's advanced. Uh, they are facing that direction. Just with the square bases, it's hard to turn everyone around. Five. Thompson, that's your uh, lucky Pierre here in the middle. In the middle. So Bill Thompson has advanced through Kevin Green. And we forgot Kevin Green was actually in hard cover, so we, I think we removed, we had one too much shock on him, so he's down to two shock. In threes, first fire, close range. Four, four, four hits. Oops. Uh, okay, uh, hard cover for Magua. Oh, two dead and a shock. It's not Magua, but we do have to roll two bad things because he's the prominent leader. Wait, no, he didn't take a wound. <laughs> the hell am I saying? Man? But we did lose two Indians. Which is not good. Although I still think that will be a match for these guys. And a shock. And so, a shock. next card. And it's a blue flag. Blue flag. So I'm up to three. Yeah, I've been at three. Or, oh, I thought it was it. No, that was the last time. Oh, okay. Um, Kevin Green. Waste of three flags. He tried to do a leapfrog, a typical laundry thing. Try Kyle. and do He's two trying two to get with us. Okay, we're not gonna come in base to base, maybe. You're well, lucky though. I rolled high enough, I just forgot I had two shocks, so my four didn't quite make it. I needed to roll a six. But if you went too far, you'd run right into Son of Magua. Well, that wouldn't be so bad either. That's Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan's on the move. Coming around the flank. Hey, hey, look at that. Another flag. <laughs> Might as well turn it upside down. Useful as it's going to be. Uh, only if I draw that last uh, yeah, flag. Hold card. on. Is there anything that I haven't activated yet? I don't think there isn't. Uh, one, two, three, three four, five, six. <laughs> Not so much. There are four. Oh, I didn't see the four. Yeah, everyone's activated. So keep pulling. You I should, guess you should probably burn those three flags. I'm gonna wait till I get that fourth one. Well, here it is. Oh. So I'll pull two shock. Kevin Green. Okay, use his flag. Use his command. Yeah. That was a good call there. And yay, Travis gets to double activate before the Tiffin. <laughs> well, one unit gets to double activate. Oh. Right, I'm going to use my four flags. Wait. What happened here? I haven't seen flags. I'm like, what happened? Did it turn in? You what used them all, something? Travis. <laughs> you used them all. Anyway, Son of Magua is going to assault Kevin Green. Or, is that Kevin Green? No, that's, uh, that's, no, that's, uh, that's Thompson. Thompson. All right, so he's a full unit then. Man, I thought it was assaulting Kevin Green. So they moved in. Fired. Yes. Yep. So they moved in. So they're unloaded. Yep. But I have tomahawks. There's only five of me left. So three. Three shock on you. So that's going to so drop I'm you down. down five. One. And I'm at 11. After counting everything up, uh, including tomahawks, which gives you three shock. Okay, I need five dead here. Yeah, it's, I was going to say, even with six dice, you could do some damage, so go ahead. Or not. Ah, just one. One and a shock, so we'll keep track of that here. Now you have to let him back on to Thompson's boys. Two and... So five dead. Oh, those are dead? Yeah, fives and sixes are kills. <laughs> <laughs> Fives and sixes are kills, and a six is a kill and a shock, so we'll figure it out. The so Son of Magua has swept the Continental Militia away. He attacked Thompson, wiped him out, beat him by four. They fell back 18, doubled, like took four shock. The losers that were supporting them, uh, Kevin Green, took a bunch of shock. They interpenetrated uh, Padilla's squad on the way back. He's got five shock. Yeah, it's looking bad over here. So you get for bringing the militia up against Son of Magua. Yeah, well, it ain't over yet. Not yet. Dan Clean. Then Dan has moved up over the fence. We're gonna take a shot at Wadsworth. Eden Forge, first fire, light infantry. 
One, two, three, four, five hits. Actually, six hits, I'm sorry. Soft cover. Just one dead. But it might be Wadsworth. Nah. Close. Close. Took his hat off. So just a, just a dead ranger. Now the red's coming out. Oh. Blue three. That's Wadsworth. Half unloaded. Wadsworth's gonna fire at Kopke's boys. Need so forces on Six column. shots. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven shots. Because he's a level two leader. So oh. Get plus one or plus two shots. Needing fours? Yep. <laughs> two hits. <laughs> one on Kopke's. One on Fritz's. Point of shock on Fritz. Front rank. They're done. They can't move anymore for the game. Blue four. Kevin Green. Uh, that's oh, this formation green here machine. with ten shock. With ten shock. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, they're gonna take some more shock if they take. Actually, if they get one more shock, <laughs> they're toast. <laughs> or two more shock. So I can take the shock off. You could, because you have no flags. Or I could try and move. You can move backwards, but then you'll inter interpenetrate your guys. Of course, if they're not breaking through them, is it the same as... Because they broke through them, so I, they ran through I panic. don't think it's in a, it says anything about uh, losing shock when you uh, are orderly withdrawing through somebody's lines. Okay. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, bail six inches. Kevin Green just pulled back. Tactical relocation. Behind Padilla. You have to take your 10 shock with you, Andre. Oh no. Two flags in a row. And the main man. Main man. Felsen took a shock off. He also ordered uh, Lankowski out of the trees. And then he advanced his boys up 2d6 this direction. We got a fully unloaded here. And an unloaded Dan Clean. And three flags. Three flags. Hey, yeah, it's still yeah. early. I'll okay, keep red flag. <laughs> yeah, you want a red flag so I can end it. I know. Uh, Two. Andrew Cox. That's your sergeant. Pull another shock. Okay. Ooh. Pull one off of here. So you get two groups of three now. Oh, check it out. We can uh, pull two more shocks. Two more. So just we're, one off of each. We're on it now. Okay, so next. two more turns and we're combat effective. You do have flags. We could pull two more off. Uh, sure, two more. So you're down to one shock each. And the and tiffin. tiffin. No, but I can still activate everything. <laughs> well, the only thing I have left is Kopke and the Grenadiers. Alright. So I forgot Andre still had a flag left and Padilla. His group is gonna activate and try to Padilla's last bombs. charge. Didn't I don't think that makes it. No, because he has five shock and then you need a thirteen. I needed a eight. I only got a six. Yeah, just short. Well valiant effort, Padilla. Valiant effort. You just better hope you get the first one next. <laughs> Andre's down to four on his force morale, so we pull the flag up. And we decided right. not to put any uh, red uh, cards back in. Oh, Montrose. Interesting. <laughs> right, so he snapped them in, and he's going to fire on the Kopke. Here's the, the first trees. ten. That's a good roll there. So ten. So seven. Okay. Eight, nine, ten. So five on each group. Turns out Lieutenant Dan is actually in the arc of fire of Montrose's boys. So we split them all up. So we'll start here with Kopke's boys. Come on. Three shock. And then Hans Fritz. Two shock. And Lieutenant Dan. Nothing. 
whizzed right over his head. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't even the target. Sweet. <laughs> Next day. <laughs> my. They knew that my big lucky uh, shot, and I. Uh, they knew you were fire, you were firing at cocky and. Nothing but shock. Two. That's Lankowski. That's yep. these guys. Lankowski and these guys came up. Uh, D3 moved up a D6, already loaded, and they're going to fire. Needing uh, sixes, sadly. I think we're out of 12 here, but uh, short long range. One hit. Put it on, <laughs> put it on the Montrose. That was a lot of fives. <laughs> yeah. I just need to get a little bit closer. Nothing. Not even a shock. Just unloaded. Blue four. Kevin Green, um, I guess that's these guys here. You can pull a shock. Yeah, they, they only <laughs> have 10. Is he down to 20 now? They're down to 9. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, you'll Hans see Fritz. My four. Hey, Hans Fritz is going to do his job. He's going to pull a shock. Oh, sweet. Good job, Hans. Robert Wadsworth. All right, Wadsworth's gonna tap reload, fire at these guys. So you're needing uh, fours. Sweet. Three hits. So two on Kopke. <laughs> yeah. Tap reload. It just went right over our head. Uh, point of shock. We're weathering the storm, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Even storm? In. What storm? <laughs> storm of lead. There's. It's been raining over there, but it ain't been raining on them. Three flags in a row. Three flags. So roll a random right. event. Firing random event. Five. Fire. The nearest building within 12 inches of the fire has caught a light. Place a suitable <laughs> smoke marker <laughs> on this building. Hey, you could have burned the church down for me. <laughs> that helped me out a little bit. But the house is caught on fire somehow. I don't know why, but there we go. I don't know what that does. Um, actually, does it drift doesn't it drift and you have a smoke screen? We could do that. I seem to recall Kind of do that. a chain of command thing where it just grows <laughs> a random direction. Or, yeah, I guess that's chain of command. Never for mind. three phases, so it'll work for me. Uh, another flag. That's four flags in a row. <laughs> Man, hold on. I might want to use that to activate somebody. Alright, we're going to wait. I got all excited. I'm going to use thin red line for the first time ever in charge. Uh, then Andre said, well, you need flags for that. <laughs> I got three flags. I got, oh, yeah. Damn. Uh, Four, that's five flags in a row. Here we go. <laughs> Do we get another? Oh, oh, no. Two. Andrew Cox. So another shock. Another shock. Okay. Next one. Three. Three. Kopke. Cool. So we just had uh, Kopke just gave him a form up order. They just went from column to like that. Even with the six shock. Even with the six shock. We don't even know what form up is, but it is a rule in there. Seldom used. Seldom. I've never uh, really I heard of it. Seems like we use it quite a bit. Form up. I don't remember. Or maybe, well, maybe I'm thinking change formation. Oh, you're thinking snap in. Mm -hmm. This was changed the entire formation, like go from co close oh, column to yeah. line. Well, anytime you're marching, you use, at the end, you use a form up. That's true. Okay, uh, anyway, well, six. So what do you got? That's Padilla. So now's your chance to try to kill Son of Magua. Oh, man. Uh, Padilla is going to charge Son of Magua. He's got five shock, but only about three inches to cover. How hard could it be? Actually, you took an extra shock last time because you went 3d6. That gives you an extra shock. So you're at six. So if you go in 3d6 again, you can take another one, but that won't affect your dice. I think I made it. Uh, triple six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that'll do it. You need a lot more shock than that. Okay, so I'm back here. <laughs> yeah, bull rush, right through them. All right, here comes Padilla with his four dice. And I just rolled three sixes, and I followed it up. That's two kills. Blogwell will strike back. 
One, only two kills. Two kills. And two shock, though. So. Actually, you rolled an extra dice. You've got uh, two shock yourself. Oh. All right. Uh, I'll re-roll then? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, be happy with the two dead. <laughs> All right, so. I just wanted everybody to know you were cheating. Roll there. for your leader. All right. Not the leader. It's not my leader either, thankfully. All right, we'll sort all this out. All right, Padilla, uh, you lost two men, took two shocks who actually retired by shock, one inch, but the combat is now over. We would have fought again, but he did an involuntary withdrawal. He stepped back, didn't uh, lose anything on the bad thing happens table. And there it is, the one. The one. The thin red line. It's time. All right, here we go. Elsden, thin red line. He's ordered Son of Magua out of the way. First thing they do, so I spent two cards and I'm gonna fire a volley, which might do pity in, in its own. Um, have they fired yet? Yeah, they did. They shot at uh, your leader. But I am within close range. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus three more. Nine hits. On to Padilla. No worries. Soft cover. Padilla can take it. Padilla can take anything. Soft cover. Uh, he can take anything, but he can't take that. So check and see if it's Padilla then. It is. Oh no. What happens to him? He's knocked out. So Padilla's down. So he lost two other guys took two more shock so they're definitely gonna break they're at 10 yeah we'll, uh, we'll roll everything up here Padilla's on the move or his men are carrying Padilla they broke this flank is pretty much done so Andre's down to two on his force morale now so do you want to just retreat to the village well since we didn't make it to the church I guess that'd be a good <laughs> idea I will obviously make it to the church now, so we'll come back and wrap it up. So British Victory, again, this was a test game. Uh, we're trying to figure out kind of the balance that you need to have a good game where you, the attacker has an actual objective to blow something up or burn something down or get off the table. Normally when we play this, uh, straight out of the book, with even forces, even with double the uh, force or uh, force support, the attacker still, I don't know if we've ever... We maybe have accomplished something once, just due to sheer luck. So. But, but anyway, so we've been talking about, you know, well, obviously the attackers need more. Question is how much more? And this maybe was too much more. Uh, I'm going to disagree there. You think this was should have been a fair fight? I think this was possibly balanced. I think where it really threw it into your favor was you starting with all your stuff on the board. So you think if we just started normally? I think if I had a chance to get up towards that crossroads and start um, laying fire as I retreated back, I could have had a, a chance. Yeah, and yeah. But you beyond that, um, no, my forces are way too weak because if you catch me anywhere out in the open, you know, I'm, I got nothing. Yeah, the uh, the militia are just way way too weak. It's unless I can uh, you know try and uh, do a classic uh, you know uh, American hide behind the uh, fence uh, plinking away thing. Yeah, that's what we tried in the last game, and it was too hard to get by. But those were all inf well, light infantry and. And Indians. you gave me too much. Uh, yeah, there was still too much on the American side. I think the Americans have been weakened enough. No, you were the British in that one. You were all you were an all British skirmish force. Oh, well. In any event, I I think the last time we played it, it was you know there it was imbalanced, but it wasn't imbalanced enough. I think the imbalance in forces isn't too bad. It's just if you allow the British to come in with uh, that you know get that much position, it's uh, there's no way for the Continentals to. Uh, really get into a place where they can 
do anything other than just line up and have a fair fight, which they'll well, be obliterated. You could have gone that way. You <laughs> didn't have trying. to. You didn't have to rush three squads they, right into me. Travis, <laughs> that was my plan: was to ignore that flank and bring everything this way. Yeah. And I tried. I even got a fabulous roll right up the road. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, that that was absolutely in my plan: was to take everything this way, and all of a sudden that just totally uh, went yeah. down the tubes. You got just in the range of my uh, major volley. And you got your fourth flag and got to yeah. fire it. So then I thought, okay, well, now all I've really got is maybe I can take out the Indians on the other flank. That'll make your main line turn and maybe give me enough time to regroup these guys. And as we know, taking the Indian unit out is can be brutal on the uh, Ask Steve. <laughs> Ask anybody. Anyone um, who's dropped like five Force Morale because they lost an Indian unit. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Yeah, no, it's because uh, <laughs> of the prominent leader and all that. The, the yeah, the prominent leader can really be a bummer. So I skated on that roll twice. That was, you know, I, I figured that was the only real shot I had because, um, yeah. British uh, troops are pretty badass when they're all lined up in an open field. Yeah, especially if um, they have multiple leaders or a level three leader that can take off a lot of shock. Uh, they're hard to deal with, so I think and, we need to get some more big line fights going. Yeah, I wasn't really able to get my rangers. They actually got out and were firing at long range. Maybe, uh, maybe we should have allowed you to buy a secondary jump off point so you could deploy all the way out there that would have uh that was kind of a that's why i went that way because i thought there was going to be a rush of like maybe padilla oh. rangers and then a squad running up that you know travis i was bringing everything down the road though you should have went through here um there's no fence right here just woods so I, yeah i was thinking okay here he comes through the woods I can see maybe leaving these guys maybe over here somewhere. Well, with the I figured squad. with the uh, the you know my main militia force coming up and the rifles, and then I figured these guys would probably have to swing around and actually I would have had to left something over here on this flank just to keep you honest. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, I that was the whole plan was this I might have a chance against that. Um, I didn't see any way of uh, dealing with. I thought I might be able to, you know, isolate a, a team and not, you know, yeah. who knows. Um, but yeah, I got uh, I got a great roll and uh, got myself just out to where I got obliterated. <laughs> yeah, so I think if we played this same, if we play this again, instead of like the two groups of militia skirmish, you had two more groups of actual real light infantry. That would be helpful. The two rain, the rangers plus the two light infantry. Maybe the same forces, all continental, no militia against this, would be a little bit better. Um, well, it, then it's it. It really comes down to how you're trying to play it out, because this one has a lot to do with how much time I have to get into position and defend terrain before you get set up and get your lines built. So if I'm able to get into position and start messing with you before you've got your lines built, then this isn't a bad you or, know, force them out to do that. Or but, we just have the deployment point be in the church. Then you can start deploying around it right away. If I was, then I could have, well... Then you could literally popped up right in front of me. <laughs> well, the whole thing is, I mean, you basically chopped off, you know, we're, we're working off a four by four, uh, you know, so it's, you weren't marching across the table at all, which yeah. is the whole place where the Continentals had a shot at yeah. doing well, damage. Next time we'll keep this game uh, in our, uh, you know, our data banks here and Next time we play a game like this, we'll recall this day and <laughs> make adjustments to it. That's so all you can do is just practice, uh, do test games pretty much and see what does it take. You know, it's suddenly, well, this wasn't enough. So now we know we need to change things a little bit to balance it out. So it's, 
uh, a good learning game for us to for um, development of future scenarios. Well, and it's nice to just play a little sharp practice every once in a while. Yeah, and the first time we did uh, Thin Red Line, the volley itself. The <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna wrap it up here. So. Uh, uh, thanks for watching. As usual, check out our Patreon page, check out our Facebook group. Um, we got a lot of other sharp practice videos on the channel already if you want to check those out. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.